Our passage about fasting today comes from the book of Acts, and it's from Acts chapter 13, and this is a key time in the movement of the book of Acts because it's about the beginning of the mission to the Gentiles. Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. Now in the church at Antioch there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Menaean, a member of the court of Herod the ruler, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. You know, there's an awful lot packed into these few verses. Uh, first of all, it's amazingly how multicultural, how diverse this group of early Christians is. You have Barnabas, who's Jewish, Simeon, who's called Niger, which means black. He's almost certainly a black Christian from North Africa. You have Lucius, also from Cyrene. You have Menaean, who's a member of King Herod's ruling court, so he's up in a position of power and influence. And you have Saul. And you notice in this passage, we have fasting combined not just with praying, but with worship. And as I mentioned in my sermon on fasting, part of the idea behind fasting is we empty ourselves of food so that we can be filled with the Spirit of God, with the Spirit of Christ. And worship and fasting go together that way very, very well. And it's while they're worshiping and fasting that in being open to God and giving God their focused attention, the Holy Spirit speaks to them and says, set aside for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. And you notice at this point in the book of Acts, Barnabas' name still comes first. Remember, it was Barnabas when nobody else would go near Saul after he had been persecuting the church and seeing Christians thrown in jail, and then he has his dramatic conversion experience on the road to Damascus where the risen Christ confronts him. Nobody believed that Saul had genuinely changed. And Barnabas was the one, that wonderful man with the gift of encouragement, who put his own reputation on the line and took Saul under his wing. And at this point in the book of Acts, Barnabas' name still comes first. That will change in a couple chapters. But I, I really appreciate this emphasis on both fasting with worship and fasting on praying. Even after they heard from the Holy Spirit, they don't immediately rush out. They then take time to fast and to pray and to confirm, yes, this is what we believe we are hearing from God. And that's a good lesson for us as well. And then after getting that confirmation, they lay hands on Barnabas and Saul and send them out with great confidence. I encourage you to consider combining fasting and worship sometime as well as fasting and prayer.